Hello guys, this is Avinash and you're watching Everything Metallurgy. So friends, in the last lecture, we have discussed about the overview of all the processes that will be taking place in a steel making. We have discussed the different types and what is primary steel making and secondary steel making. We have briefly discussed in the first video. So if you have not watched it, I will be leaving in the cards so you can check it out. So in this video, in this video, we will be discussing about the steel making slag we'll be discussing about the slag in the steel making so there is a statement there is a statement like this that's make a slag and slag will make steel that means make a slag and the slag only makes the steel so they will be knowing why the slag is such important or why slag has such an important role in the steel making we will be knowing in the all the oxidation reactions what are the different conditions that are required for different reactions or different removal of impurities we will be discussing and then we will get to know what is the importance of slag so this statement always remember to make a good slag and the slag makes a good steel slag what is a slag okay Slag is nothing but a solution of oxides and sulfides. Oxides and sulfides. So the oxygen content which we sent through the lance, it dissolves in the metal, it reacts with the different impurities that are present in the hot metal and it removes in the form of oxides and if there is any sulfur content present in the steel, it will be removed in the form of sulfides. Okay. And this has, and these oxides and this sulfide has a very less density as compared to the hot metal. So because of low density, these oxides and sulfides form a solution and float on the hot metal. Okay. Because it is lighter than the, this solution is lighter than the hot metal. So it floats and forms a different layer. That layer is known as slag. Okay. So. Slag is nothing but it's a solution of oxides and sulfides that are formed from the refining of the hot metal. Okay, so this is slag. Now we'll see what is the role of the slag. We are talking about good slag makes a good steel. So we'll discuss the different roles of a slag. Okay, so what are the importance? What are the important roles of a slag? So the first thing is it acts as a sink for impurities. Yes, because all the impurities in the hot metal it will be converted into oxides or sulfides and goes into this layer. So the slag should be an acceptor of these impurities in the form of oxides and sulfides. That's why it is known as a sink. Okay. The next one is it controls the oxidizing and reducing potential. That means the slag will be controlling the oxidizing or the reduction. What should be taking place is decided by the form of the slag. Okay. During this refining. This controls the oxidizing and the reduction or reducing potential with the help of or the content of FeO. I'll explain this in the coming part of the video or in the, it's better to discuss in the reactions, different reactions. Okay. So this is content of FeO which decides the role or which decides the oxidizing potential and the reducing potential of a slag layer. Higher FeO means the slag is oxidizing. Okay. Higher FeO means it is oxidizing, otherwise, it is reducing. If there is high FeO content in the slag, then this will oxidize the hot metal. If the content of FeO is less, then it reduces the hot metal. Okay, this is an important point to be noted, and I'll explain this. How this role will be changing with the content of FeO. Okay. So these are the main roles 
and there are also many we will discuss all the roles it acts as a thermal barrier it acts as a thermal barrier to prevent heat transfer okay if the heat from the hot metal is moving into the atmosphere easily then what happens it will be easily getting solidified in the converter itself and the refining will not be taking place and also the furnace will be jammed so without happening that this lag will act as a thermal barrier so that the heat is not passing out into the atmosphere okay that is the thermal barrier rule and it also prevents the passage of other unwanted gases like passage of nitrogen hydrogen we have discussed in the first video of what are the effects of these nitrogen and hydrogen generally it creates embrittlement so the slag layer acts as a barrier between the atmosphere and the hot metal layer not only as a thermal barrier but also this layer prevents the passage of these unwanted gases like nitrogen and hydrogen from the atmosphere to the molten steel okay and this also protects the steel to be protects the steel from reoxidation as there is oxygen present in the atmosphere again if there is any extra oxygen that leads to reoxidation this layer also prevents that to take place and also in ef steel making the same thing the thermal barrier point only in ef steel making it prevents the sag prevents the radiation of heat okay the slag prevents the radiation of heat maybe to the walls of the furnace or the roof through the electrodes and all this stuff this is in EAF where radiation of heat takes place okay so these are the different roles of slag and all these are very important for better steel making purposes okay now what are the composition of the slag we have discussed in blast furnace or we have discussed now also that the oxides and sulfides are the main constituents of the slag and in these oxides also there are two type of oxides the first one is basic oxide and acidic oxide basic oxide is nothing but these oxides donates the oxygen from them for example the examples of basic oxides are cao mgo MnO and also FeO. These are the different basic oxides which donates the oxygen. And these are the acidic oxides are the acceptors of the oxygen. And these are nothing but SiO2 and P2O5. Okay. These are the basic oxides and the acidic oxides. Basic oxides have octahedral octahedral structures. Whereas these acidic oxides have tetrahedral structures. Just remember this. Okay, that acidic oxides have tetrahedral structure and the basic oxides have octahedral structures. Now, at very high temperature, the molten silica consists of SiO4 minus 4 and Sa plus ions. That means at high temperatures, at the steel making temperature always remember this is the most abundant ion and this was the question asked in gate 2018 okay what is the abundant form of si at higher temperatures or in steel making it is sio4 minus 4 okay and the bonding between the cation and anion between the cation and anion is very strong in these acidic oxides or sio2 or p2o5 okay it is very strong and these simple ions group to form the complex oxides okay the simple cations like this sio2 will be forming sa plus and o minus 2 but this o minus 2 generally it reacts with some other and form a complex ions or a complex oxides like sio4 minus 4 or po4 minus 3 all these are the complex oxides that are formed from the acidic oxides and these usually tend to form a hexagonal network okay these complex ions coming from the acidic oxides tend to form 
a hexagonal network therefore these acidic oxides are known as network formers okay these acidic oxides are known as network formers what are network formers acidic oxides or sao2 and p2o5 so always remember this these acidic oxides will be tend to form complex ions like sao4 minus 4 and po4 minus 3 which form a hexagonal network and these are these oxides are called because of this hexagonal network formation these are called network formers okay this is why because these can accept oxygens okay these acidic oxides can accept the oxygens that come from basic oxides this oxygen will be reacting with these and forming these complex ions okay similarly basic oxides basic oxides like all these we have discussed cao mgo mno FeO these dissociate into simple ions. Simple ions like Ca plus two O minus two. Okay, these are simple ions. These are donors of oxygen. This oxygen will react with the acidic oxide. These are the donors of oxygen oxide, and these are called network breakers. And these basic oxides are called network breakers. Why? Because here they destroy the hexagonal network that is formed by the acidic oxides. Okay, the basic oxides react with the structure or the hexagonal network and destroy them by reacting with them. I'm not writing the reactions here because for gate point you must remember what is a network former what is a network breaker what are the examples okay so always remember basic oxides are network breakers so this is an importance of or the classification of oxides that are present in the slag one is basic and one is acidic basic are known as network breakers acidic are known as network formers so now why with this uh, network breaker and network former? What is the effect of this network? We are calling a network a hexagonal network is formed. So what is the significance of this network? The significance of this network can be observed in the changes of viscosity of the slag. Okay, the network will be resulting in affecting the viscosity of the slag. So now what is a viscosity? A viscosity is nothing but a property of a liquid or a molten metal in this case which can control the movement from one place to other place. That is a basic definition of viscosity and here why we have to discuss viscosity? Why we have to discuss the viscosity of the slag layer because the viscosity controls the fluidity fluidity is again the movement of this slag layer so the viscosity of the slag controls its fluidity slag should be fluid enough such that slag must be fluid enough such that it can be removed easily it can be removed easily during the tapping now what is this statement we know slag is a layer that is forming above the steel yes in the steel making it is a layer that is forming on the top if this is viscous more viscous then what happens it is not so fluid and it cannot be removed easily yes because of this viscosity the fluidity decreases and it cannot be removed easily so the slag always the slag is a waste material it is a sink for impurities so all these impurities must be removed otherwise they get recovered into the steel again that should be avoided so because of that the slag should be tapped away to make it happen the viscosity of the slag should be less so that the fluidity increases and the slag can be removed easily that means the viscosity is inversely proportional to the fluidity that is what we are discussing till now 
okay the viscosity is again a function of temperature composition and also the solid percentage and also the solid percentage so now we'll discuss the effect the viscosity decreases with increase in temperature how if eta is viscosity it follows this equation okay this is the effect of temperature on viscosity if we increase the temperature the viscosity decreases and again one more thing addition of these basic oxides we are discussing the network formers and network breakers so if the network is forming and forming and forming the bond is increasing the bond is getting stronger and what happening if the bond gets stronger the viscosity increases so to break that we add basic oxides that is why we require basic slag in a steel making process okay so the addition of these basic oxides decreases the viscosity addition of basic oxides decreases the viscosity because they destroy the hexagonal network that are formed okay so the decrease in the viscosity is greater with alkaline oxides such as Na2O and Cf2 where you can form alkaline oxides as compared to normal regular basic oxides like CaO and MgO okay so addition of basic oxides also decreases the viscosity of the slag because of breaking or destroying the hexagonal network and there is one oxide there is an example of some oxides which can act as both is acidic as well as basic these are called amphoteric amphoteric oxides okay what are these amphoteric oxides amphoteric oxides act as basis in the presence of acid and it act as acid in presence of base that means a dual nature can be observed in this amphoteric oxides best example is al2o3 alumina it acts as a network breaker in an acidic slag yes and a network former in a basic slag so these are known as amphoteric oxides so if i write re reactions okay these are the reactions in this reaction it is donating the oxygen that means it is acting as a base that means it is in an acidic slag here it is acting as an acid because it is accepting an as, uh, oxygen ion and forming some complex ion okay so it is in the basic slag this is in a basic slag this is in an acidic slag okay so this is about amphoteric oxide such as alumina so now we have uh, also discussed about solid fraction or the solid percentage how the viscosity will be changing with the presence of a solid we'll just see there is a formula for that okay where if eta naught is an initial viscosity and phi is a solid fraction of a solid okay solid fraction then what happens if the solid fraction increases that means in the presence of a solid particles in the slag the viscosity is also increasing this increases this also increases so there is a statement a standard statement in if phi is between 5 to 10 percent then eta increases by 
about 114 to 130%. So this has a drastic effect. The solid fraction or the effect presence of solid has a drastic effect or increase in the viscosity. So this is the effect of solid presence of solid in the viscosity. Fine. So this is the viscosity part. So now we'll study basicity. As I said, the basic slag is required in the steel making process. What is this uh, basicity? Basicity is nothing but the ratio of weight percentage of basic oxides to the weight percent of acidic oxides. Okay. It is generally also called as V ratio. Okay. So, if they are very more number of oxides are there, then you can write as the sum of all the concentrations or the weight percentages. This is known as basicity. Okay. So, again, if for a basic slag, the basicity is greater than 1. For an acidic slag, the basicity should be less than 1. Because in an acidic slag, this dominates as well as in a basic slag, this dominates. So, this is the basicity. And always, you must remember that the basic slag is required for effective steel making. Fine. Now, we will see about the oxidation and reduction potential. I said that FeO content will be controlling the oxidation and reduction potential yes so now how this will be taking place so this refers to the capability of the slag whatever is the oxidation or the reduction potential it refers to the capability of the slag either to transfer the oxygen into the steel or to transfer the oxygen from the steel to the slag so this is known as the oxidation or the reduction potential of a slag now why we are telling this feo content determines this because feo will be dissociating into fe plus o we right if there is feo present in the slag it, this will be dissociating into fe plus o okay the equilibrium constant will be equal to a Fe by A Feo into A O. A Fe is anyhow one. So A Feo is proportional to A O. That means if the Feo content is more, the oxygen going into the metal also increases. That means it is providing oxygen for further oxidation. That means it is acting as a oxidizing slag if not if this is decreasing or less then backward reaction takes place and it is taking the oxygen from the steel into the slag that means it is reducing the steel okay so this is why we say the feo content of the slag determines the oxidation or the reduction potential of the slag so this is why we say FeO content determines the oxidation and the reduction potential of the slag. Now we will discuss a process or you can say a parameter important phenomena slag foaming. What is this slag foaming? Okay, what is a foam? A liquid is said to be foaming when a gas bubble <coughs> foam is nothing but a liquid plus gas when a gas is entrapped into a liquid it is known as foam and when this foaming is taking place in the slag then it is known as slag foaming now a liquid or a slag is said to be foaming when the gas bubbles could not escape through the liquid as a result the height of the fluid increases so we know this equation when feo in the slag reacts with carbon content of the hot metal this will be taking place. I have uh, written this equation in the last video. 
where we have discussed the different reactions taking place in the steel making process. Okay, so FeO plus C gives rise to CO plus Fe. Okay, so slag forming reaction occurs within the slag when this CO, this CO that is formed or this may be also forming in some other reactions. When this CO will not be escaping into the atmosphere and this gets entrapped, entrapped in the slag. When this is, is taking place, it is known as slag forming. Okay. That means the height of slag increases. Now, whether this is feasible or not, whether this is favorable or not, yes, this slag forming is favorable until unless the slag is not coming out of the converter. This is very useful. Why? Because it is enhancing the reaction area. It is enhancing the reaction area and the interface between the slag and the metal will be strong enough such that the reactions will be taking place. So, where this, when this will be taking place? If the reactions take place deep in the bath, then the carbon monoxide bubbles have enough time to grow in size and can easily escape through the slag layer. But reactions like these, which occur at the gas metal interface, immediately after the reaction, the CO will be entrapped into the slag because it doesn't have much time to grow in size and to escape outside. Fine, we know uh, the terminal velocity formula. It is directly proportional to d square. We have discussed this in our iron making lectures. So when size, <coughs> <coughs> we have discussed this in our iron making lectures and if the size increases, the velocity is also increasing. If there is less size, the velocity is very less and it can easily get entrapped in the slag layer. Okay, this leads to slag forming. This reaction which takes place at the gas metal interface will lead to slag forming. And as I already said, slag forming is desirable to some extent such that the slag should not flow out of a converter. So, this is about steel making slag guys and there is one more thing which is known as foaming index that means what is the relation between the gas velocity thickness of the layer or the height of the slag layer okay so foaming index is nothing but foaming index is the ratio of foam thickness or the foam layer thickness to the average gas velocity this is known as foam foaming index okay lower foaming index means the gas bubbles have high velocity if foaming index is low the gas velocity is high so easy escape of gas bubbles is taking place which may be either due to the increase in this or it may be either decrease in this thickness in either way it is possible if foaming index is decreasing and always remember this foaming index is proportional to the viscosity also okay why we are telling this because if the viscosity is increasing what happens the foaming index also increases the bubbles cannot easily escape out because of that the foaming take place yes so this is about the slag in steel making in the coming videos in a single video i'll be covering about all the oxidation reactions that will be taking place in the steel making process and the conditions that are favorable for each and every refining process okay so give this video a like and share it with all gate aspirants so that it can help out many people because extraction metallurgy or especially ferrous extraction is a subject where i feel maximum 
chunk of students will face difficulties so it will be very useful for them if you share with them and let them know about everything metallurgy so thank you guys